Hi, uh, my name is Max Gordon. Uh, I'm uh, the author of the Forest Plot Package, which I'm here to present to you. I'm uh, an orthopedic surgeon and I'm also a researcher at Current Sk Institute. And the Forest Plot Package was one of my packages that I generated during my PhD thesis, and I'm very happy to be able to present it to you now. So let's get started. Let's put me to the side over there. Great. Um, so uh, here is a very basic example. Uh, we create a uh, table, uh, a data frame, uh, with some uh, basic data to study and some made up uh, values uh, here. And then uh, we pipe that into the forest plot uh, where we provide the column name for the label text, the mean, the lower, upper, uh, values uh, so that we get this very basic not so pretty plot but but it does the job uh, so as you can see here uh, forest plot follows uh, the tidyverse syntax uh, with uh, this is the native pipe uh, that pipes into the forest plot uh, the tibble and then you can easily specify the columns using uh, the column names and you don't have to have uh, quotation marks. Uh, if we want to make it slightly prettier, we can uh, pipe it forward once we've done the forest plot. It doesn't actually plot until you call the print or the plot function uh, on the returned object. Uh, and uh, you're able to uh, manipulate any way you want to. So here you can see we uh, add a header, uh, which is study. You can find it over there. And now it's uh, in the summary format. Uh, that means it uh, is output as bold. Uh, we also can set some styles here. Uh, we have uh, color, the lines. As you can see, they're no longer black and boring. Now they're slightly happier and blue. Uh, if we move on to a more uh, complex example, we have some metadata here. Uh, forest plots are probably most popular in uh, meta-analysis, although I find them incredibly useful for any type of uh, multiple uh, uh, outcome output. Uh, so here you can see the, the same syntax. Uh, you may notice that we no longer have the mean lower upper as we had there but uh, this is because the metadata has columns that are called mean lower and upper so it automatically ma maps them onto those values unless you uh, have provided something else here then here we have uh, some more uh, columns for label text which is very common as you are for all are familiar with. So you can see we have the studies, we have some uh, uh, data, the odds ratio, and then we have the actual values here. Uh, and we've um, here uh, specified a clip so that we don't have to see that all the these wide confidence interval we can focus on the, on the most important parts. A very important part when you uh, use plots is to try to focus on the message. Um, it's almost always impossible to show everything. You need to uh, choose what you want to focus your plot on. You also see that we're now using the logarithmic scale as this is uh, an odds ratio. Uh, we have uh, the same styles we had previously. Uh, and here we have a slightly more complex header. Uh, so this has two levels, uh, two rows. So you can see the first one here, the study row is empty, then the study comes. And then we have deaths and for the steroid group and deaths for the placebo and then odds ratio. Uh, so hopefully this is fairly intuitive. You could also just have two lines with this add header uh, and it would work just as well. Now, uh, we also want to add some summary data. Uh, and here's the code for that. So we can append a row at the end. Uh, both the add header and append row 
use the insert row uh, underneath so you can actually insert a row wherever you want um, now here we add our uh, estimates uh, and then also the actual column values for for the text that we want to output here and we can uh, uh, since this is a summary we uh, set this simply to true and then we have this uh, nice uh, diamond here as we're very familiar with from our uh, meta-analysis and uh, we can make it even more readable here uh, if you have plenty of lines it can be hard to follow which studies especially if you have a very wide plot as we have here with uh, plenty of columns we may want to have a zebra style to it so we can specify it here um, this uh, you can have several uh, colors uh, by default if you just provide a single uh, color you will have um, uh, white uh, or no color at the first uh, line and then uh, you go to uh, the color that you provided and then back and forth just as a zebra but you can also provide three colors and it will rotate through those colors uh, then here we have added some lines and uh, so it automatically adds lines here uh, for uh, the between the summary uh, elements and the bottom line uh, and uh, that hopefully makes it slightly easier to see what what's important and what belongs where uh, you can also decorate the actual graph as we've done here so we've uh, put some uh, information here whether it's good or bad uh, as sometimes it's not always obvious from uh, the measurement uh, and uh, here we can uh, also if we find that the text is actually too small we can set the style of the text uh, with the, in the set style argument you have the text uh, uh, graphic parameters uh, you can see here we had also but we didn't provide a text parameter now with the text parameter we're able to do some fancy stuff so for instance here in uh, the label you may wonder what what am i doing here well it's very simple basically i have a list of two so every other element is applied to the list this is an empty graphical parameter this is uh, slightly reddish and as you see this column and this column all have a red tint to them uh, the same here for ticks uh, and the labels so you can uh, specify the size of, of uh, the labels that you want you can increase them or do whatever you want with the uh, sizes so that it's very important that your plots are readable to uh, your readers otherwise they get very frustrated here you can uh, find uh, that we are also able to use expressions uh, this was a feature I added early on perhaps not that useful I would recommend trying to keep with odds ratio hazard ratio whatever estimate you're using and not having a beta value this is also slightly inconvenient from a uh, programmatic uh, standpoint as, as this is the expression is hard to add attributes and uh, control for it but if you want to you can have math in your forest plot as well now usually the box size as you can see here the, the boxes kind of by default are uh, can be really small and they, they vary and they vary depending on the width of the confidence interval uh, sometimes i find that that's a little too much information you already have the confidence interval so you don't want to have the reader thinking about what why is the box different size and uh, i usually set the box size to set size here as you see 0 0.2 in this case with always try a few different that uh, seem to work 
Um, and then uh, you have also the option of having multiple confidence intervals. This data, by the way, is from one of my studies. Uh, it's uh, when we compared uh, the Swedish and the Danish uh, hip cohorts uh, one year after their surgery. So um, uh, you can see here we have two uh, confidence intervals per row uh, and to get that um, output all you need to do is use the deeper group by argument and it will automatically generate for you this these groups uh, and also automatically the legend uh, here it's usually good to have a slightly smaller box size so that they don't overlap uh, it's also something you need to usually try which one works. In this example, I've also added a slight new feature. So there's some functionality hidden uh, that you're able to control the actual position of your text and the, the font and the italic and etc. etc. Um, and uh, as you see here, the variable uh, header is uh, aligned to the left. Here we have aligned it at the center. Uh, so you you can um, add uh, these helper functions. If you look up the help, there are several of these that can help you to manipulate the actual text. Uh, then we have the two. Here's how I defined uh, the color of the boxes. So there I have blue and red, and they uh, uh, have a border that is dark gray. Um, and uh, the color is added here. So as you can see, blue, red, it's nice, readable, automatically falls into the legend just as expected. We've also added uh, vertices here. Uh, so you can have vertices on your lines. Uh, sometimes uh, you want to save the space up here, don't want to have a legend there, you have lots of empty space within the graph, so you can move the legend into the graph. Here we also uh, have a change of names uh, here, so instead of Swedish, uh, uh, Sweden and Denmark, you see Swedes and Danes. Um, and uh, the legend position is uh, specified here, so here you have the position in the graph. This is relative to uh, the native uh, or the, the NPC position in uh, the grid package. So 0 0.85 is to the right, 0 is at the bottom, and 1 is at the top. Um, you have the, the background color and the border color uh, that we can specify so that we can make it nice and easy to spot. Uh, here you see that we've added some more features. We have now two different styles of confidence intervals. Uh, so Sweden is uh, the standard box, while Denmark gets a uh, circle here. And uh, there are some built-in functions in the package, uh, the FP draw normal uh, confidence interval and uh, the circle confidence interval um, and when you have two of these in groups they will automatically uh, render for each uh, group uh, and you here see also the, the colors that we provide and you may have noticed that we have different line types for the confidence interval here, this is dashed, this is type 2, and this is solid. Uh, also a way to separate the groups and make it more visually easy to read. Um, we can also modify the ticks. So if you remember here, uh, this, this is auto-generated ticks. Uh, if we want to, to have our own ticks, we can uh, do like this, we define our, our sequence of ticks, then we can uh, here specify an attribute of uh, which labels we're interested in or we want to output. You see, we pick every other uh, one here, and uh, then um, 
you just provide that in the xtix argument here uh, so uh, it's hopefully more uh, readable uh, we can also help the reader by adding these vertical extra lines so you have the zero line here which is strong and easy to find and then you have these two uh, or three lines here which we have specified here and we do that in the decorate graph uh, helper function sometimes uh, you have a non-inferiority study uh, then it can be useful to have a span so here for instance we uh, set the uh, area between uh, 0 0.025 uh, around zero so so there's not a single line for the zero but I, it's actually a, a box here although it mostly perhaps looks like two lines but practice it's a box and then um, you have also uh, the option of uh, generating your uh, forest plot directly from a model sometimes uh, you have uh, generated your uh, own uh, model and uh, you want to quickly have a look at it uh, here's an example uh, we create some data we uh, add some column labels for uh, the columns that we've generated here. so x1 gets uh, first variable x2 second x3 i've left without any label just to show you how it appears here so here you can see uh, the label appears here automatically and this one has the column name uh, then we uh, just use the RMS function in this case for building a Cox and uh, here's the Cox regression we pipe that into the GREG uh, force plot uh, regression object function which converts this model into a full force plot and then you can do all the stuff that I've already shown you how to do you can add the colors and the zebra style and all of that uh, good to know is uh, the package uh, is uh, currently as I'm recording this at version 3.11 and um, I use semantic versioning so whenever I change the first number this one uh, have a lookout for any breaking changes uh, that may break your code hopefully i won't be doing many of those but sometimes uh, you realize that you've done a bad choice of design in the beginning and you want to go back and change uh, so yeah, that's what i indicate with the major version minor version i've added new features uh, patch just fixed bugs so the last number and that's it thank you hope uh, the force is clear now for you guys so good luck and thank you